Hello everyone and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins and the Cowboys are headed back to the NCAA tournament for the third year in a row and of course the third straight year for the Big 8 Coach of the Year. Coach, congratulations for both of those uh, Thank you, Dean. Uh, we're happy to be back in the, the big dance. You know, that's what uh, teams work for is to try to get to the NCAA tournament. And if you get there enough times, you have a chance to get to that Final Four. Uh, this team, I think, has been a very pleasant surprise for all Cowboy followers. Uh, it's been a surprise uh, to a certain degree to me because I thought when we started the season that this team would be hard-pressed to get in the NCAA tournament. But they've had great work habits. They've gotten better. And uh, as a result, we'll be playing uh, Marquette uh, in the first round in Indianapolis on Friday afternoon. Fifth seed uh, headed up to the Hoosier Dome. You've played there before. It is, uh, I guess, domes or domes. You think of the Superdome and others. Well, as we were talking before uh, we went on the air, I don't really care for domes. Uh, I, I think basketball was meant to be played in a smaller uh, arena, but uh, it seems to be the thing to do today, the final four for the most part will always be held in a dorm uh, or in a dorm, in a, <laughs> a dome. And uh, we did play in Indianapolis when I was coaching the University of Kentucky uh, twice. We played uh, University of Indiana in, in a doubleheader up there with uh, Notre Dame and uh, Louisville being the other uh, game. And we beat Indiana the next year. We played Notre Dame and they beat us. Uh, it seats about 40,000 people. And for as far as domes go, it probably is as good a place as there is. This year we're playing the Final Four in New Orleans in the Super uh, Dome. But uh, I, I still prefer the smaller arenas that were built for basketball. But uh, we didn't have any choice, and we're not going to gripe. We're just happy to be in the, in, the, in the tournament. Midwest Regional, most agree, is the toughest of the four regionals. And we'll take a look, Coach, at all the teams in there. Indiana, of course, comes in the number one seed. They will play Wright State, New Orleans 8, Xavier 9. Indiana, a tough ball club. Well, Indiana will be especially tough since they are in the Midwest and playing right there in their backyard. Uh, there may not be 40,000 people when uh, we tip it off in our game, but believe me, uh, when Indiana gets there, they may put 40,000 Hoosier fans in there because they have a great following. They also have a great ball club. I think Indiana, in my opinion, is one of the four or five teams that has a legitimate shot at winning the national title. And on Friday at 11-20 Central, Oklahoma State, the number five seed, takes on Marquette, the 12th seed, Louisville, number four, Delaware, 13. We've had some great battles with the Cardinals. I hope we have that opportunity to play on Sunday afternoon and play Louisville. Uh, Denny Crum has a good basketball team, and I think uh, their force seating uh, certainly is uh, deserved. Uh, Marquette, we're going to talk a little bit more about them later, but uh, they too have a fine basketball team. And then the Thursday-Saturday regional at Chicago, number six seed California taking on number 11, LSU and Coach Dale Brown, then number three, Duke. Well, it looks funny to see a three out there by them, and <laughs> Southern Illinois, 14. Tough bracket. Well, it is a tough bracket because we played California, and I believe they won nine out of the last ten games. Uh, Dale Brown, uh, his ball club played well in the SEC tournament. They were beaten yesterday by the, or by Sunday, I guess it was, uh, by the University of Kentucky. Duke, even though uh, they're a third seed, they've won the national championship two years in a row, and if they're healthy, they will be a strong contender. And then, Coach, our last page has seven seed BYU against Arkansas, or SMU out of the Southwest Conference, and the second seed is Kansas taking on Ball State. We well, have three teams. The first three seeds are all legitimate uh, contenders for the national crown. Not that Louisville couldn't, couldn't get to uh, New Orleans, but when you look at Indiana and you look at Duke and you look at Kansas, uh, they're talented, they're well coached, and uh, they know how to win. Kevin O'Neill, the head coach of the Marquette Warriors. What do you know about Marquette? Well, we played uh, Marquette uh, the last two seasons. Uh, two years ago, we went up to Milwaukee and beat them. Last year, we beat them by 12 points here in Gallagher Iowa Arena, and they were a young basketball te team then. And I told uh, Kevin, I said, you're going to have a heck of a ball club in a year from now. And they have. They've had a great season. They've got a big center. They've got wonderful uh, guards, get great quickness, play D, uh, take care of the basketball, uh, they will be a tough team for us. Uh, they are by far the best 12th seed in the tournament. We were really shocked when uh, we uh, suddenly realized that they were the 12th seed because I think they're better than that. We'll have to play very well, but the philosophies of both programs are very similar. I've known Kevin for a long time. Probably a lot of people in Tulsa know Kevin because he was J.D. Barnett's assistant one time. Went from there to Arizona, was Lute Olson's assistant. 
has gone back to Marquette and revived the Warrior program that Al McGuire built so many years ago. Al McGuire, you bet. And now they are the uh, in the great Midwest Conference, a very talented conference. We'll talk more about Marquette and, of course, the NCAA tournament. Stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues after this. Cowboys went into the Big 8 tournament as the number two seed, and you met a buzzsaw in the seven seed Missouri Tigers. I said all along that Missouri was a lot better than their record, yeah. and they proved it in the uh, Big 8 tourney by not only beating us, but by going on and uh, winning in the semifinal game and then uh, beating a good Kansas State team in the finals. And no one would have thought going into the tournament that the Wildcats and the Tigers no. would be playing for the championship uh, Sunday afternoon. Coach, we saw Country Reeves there with the first bucket, but early in the ball game, again, he got in foul trouble. He got in foul trouble, and that changed the uh, complexion of the game. That was Fred Burley, Burley hitting a baseline jumper. And uh, you have to give uh, Missouri's defense some credit. They've, they're a big basketball team, and uh, with Crudup and Heller and Warren, uh, they really swarmed the uh, country every time he got the basketball. And then our guards didn't shoot it very well. Uh, Randy and, uh, and Brooks, uh, I think between them, they were like uh, two for 11, and that's not going to get it done. When they're collapsing inside, you've got to have some perimeter shooting. We got behind uh, in the ball game and just seemed like uh, never could catch up. Uh, just before halftime, with about three to go, we were only four or five points down, and they hit some big shots. and. Got into a halftime with a 13-point lead. There's a good shot of Scott Carter, a young man that uh, we have so much uh, admiration for. Has displayed great courage. He's fighting cancer, but uh, got a wonderful outlook. Lives up in Tulsa. Coach, how much uh, was it that you were disappointed in your club's play, and how much was it that Missouri obviously played well? I think it was a combination. Uh, Missouri played better than they've been playing uh, uh, for a long while and uh, just continue to play that way uh, throughout the, uh, the tournament. Uh, but Missouri is very talented and uh, I, if there was a team going into the tournament that probably had been a disappointment, it would be Missouri. But they found themselves and they're going to be in the, in the big uh, dance and uh, believe me, uh, whoever plays Missouri, and I'm not sure who they are playing, that's not going to be an easy game for anybody because they are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Of course, the Tigers getting the automatic uh, berth after Here's a, winning the tournament. There's a nice uh, lob pass by Scott Sutton into country, and that's uh, two of country's 13 points, well below his season average. Uh, of course, uh, he was voted MVP of the uh, Big 8 season and well-deserved, averaged about 20 points, 10 rebounds, leading field goal percentage shooter, but uh, had a tough afternoon against the Tigers. Coach, I know oftentimes uh, coaches, including yourself, will talk about how good opponents are, and uh, you, sometimes we tend to not believe that uh, it, it won't be easy. But I think what we saw the, there, that there's not much difference between the top team in the conference and the bottom team. Now, last week I told you that <laughs> Kansas was a little bit better than everybody in the Big 8, and Colorado wasn't quite as good. But all the way in between, those teams are just about even, and I still uh, stick by that statement. I think that uh, the six teams from... We finished with the second seed, and I guess uh, Missouri was the seventh seed. Right. Every team in between, believe me, if we went in and played a tournament again uh, this weekend and those teams were involved, uh, somebody else would probably win the tournament. Selection committee obviously impressed with the conference. Six teams heading to the big dance from the Big Eight. Only one other league uh, has six teams, the ACC. Right. The Big Ten, who everybody knows has uh, – at least two of the six or seven best teams in college basketball, Indiana and Michigan, they only got five. So uh, I think it says a lot for uh, the quality of play that we have in the Big Eight, uh, taking six out of the eight ball clubs. Coach, is this ball club a, a team that uh, you would consider a good tournament team, or do you look at a team and say, this is a good uh, conference team, or is there a difference between a tournament team and a conference team? Well, this team has been a, a pleasant surprise to me, uh, Dean, uh, from the standpoint that uh, we probably have maximized our ability about as well as we possibly could. Uh, there were a couple games that maybe we could have won, but there were a couple that we could have lost. Uh, going into the uh, NCAA tournament, uh, the thing I have tried to uh, make our players understand, let's focus in. This is a new season. Uh, there's only 64 teams that get to go, and uh, you've got to take the games one at a time, uh, the last two seasons, we've gone to the Sweet 16. Both those ball clubs are stronger teams than this one, but that doesn't mean we can't go in and win a couple games and, and get to the Sweet 16 again. When you say, is this team a tournament team? Well, we weren't a very good tournament team up in Kansas City last week, 
but uh, hopefully we'll be a better team in the NCAA. All right, we'll take a time out when we come back. More of the Eddie Sutton Show in a couple of minutes. The alley -oop, Coach. Well, this is a special play, and we'll talk more about this uh, after we look at it, but it, what we do there, we run two guards through to the baseline. We cross them, and then you'll see uh, the back screen set there by Brendan Manzer and uh, knocks, uh, I believe that's Heller off, and uh, the lob pass to uh, Bryant Reeves. We call that Cowboy Spatial. We haven't run it that much this year, but we did, and it, was, it worked in this particular game. And, Coach, that is one that you set up in the huddle. You come out several times well, after <clears throat> breaks with design plays. We're, we're not any different than a lot of ball clubs. On a timeout uh, and you have possession of the basketball, you may set up one of your spatial scoring plays and instead of running your regular offense, come out and run it. And that's what we did there. Uh, we'd been a little stagnant with our offense. And I said, well, let's run this spatial play and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then you flow right into your offense question viewers will have is why don't they run that cowboy special <laughs> a little more yeah. when do you run it and when do you not run it well I, I you know it's, it's not a play you're going to run every game <laughs> but uh, if the team is not uh, expecting it and we set it up by running what we call cowboy and right. the cowboy is where you pass the ball to a man in the middle both guards cut through to the baseline then you down screen the two people from the wings well when you run cowboy special you still run the same thing it looks like the guards going to go down but instead of down screening with the perimeter players, they cross underneath and come up and set a back screen, and then the man goes to the basket. So, you know, uh, we probably should have run it more this season. Maybe we'd have won another game. <laughs> Let's take a time, Matt. Only 30 seconds. Stay with us. We'll talk more about the NCAA tournament in just a minute. Coach, let's take a look at the NCAA seeds. Uh, there are some quality ball clubs, uh, certainly the top two or three in each uh, bracket, but your, your division is especially tough. We start out in the West with Michigan, Arizona, Vandy, and Georgia Tech. All outstanding basketball teams, all well coached, and all of them have a chance to come out of that region. Next up, the Southeast Regional. Kentucky, the Wildcats won. Seton Hall, very impressive on Sunday in winning. Florida State, explosive, and Iowa. I think all four of those teams, uh, if they get hot, they could end up in New Orleans. Uh, the selection committee has a difficult task, but I, I really believe year in, year out, they do an outstanding job in the way they seed the ball clubs. East Regional, next up, North Carolina. Even though their point guard Phelps is out there, the number one seed and a good shot to make it back again to the Sweet 16, Cincy, Mass, and Arkansas. Some people in Cincy and Massachusetts and Arkansas might argue the point, but I don't believe that regional is, is, has the quality as the other three when you take one through four. I believe North Carolina is an outstanding ball club. If they're healthy, uh, they should come out of the East Regional and be in New Orleans. Uh, they've got a legitimate shot at the national championship. I go back to this. I think this is the toughest regional if you take those four teams. I think they're all good ball clubs, especially the first three, Indiana, Kansas, and Duke are uh, three teams that are capable of uh, winning the national crown. Coach, of course, any team can win it, but uh, do you have a gut feel for well, five or six that, might hit, that you would put in an upper echelon? You, you've got to have some luck to win the national championship. Good luck. I mean, and you've got to stay healthy, and you've got to have a few good calls go in your favor, and you've got to have a strong bench. You asked me a while ago about our team. This team, our bench has gotten stronger. They're better than they were early in the year. But that would be one thing that uh, could hurt us because if we had a key player go down, I think we'd be in trouble. Top teams, I think that uh, I've already mentioned the, the four top seeds, all are legitimate uh, contenders, Duke, Kansas, that's six. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure. But those six teams are for sure. That doesn't mean that they're going to win the national crown because there are a lot of other quality teams if they get hot. We've seen that the last few years in the NCAA. The uh, best team didn't always win. We'll take a break. Back in two minutes. Stay with us. Cowboys heading to their third straight NCAA tournament, and they will do it boasting the Big 8 Coach of the Year and the Big 8 Conference Player of the Year.
Coach, in uh, less than 12 hours, you hook it up with Marquette. Uh, guards need to play better, don't they? I think that's a, a real key. Uh, in the last two games, uh, Randy and Brooks have shot 7 out of 30 from the field. Marquette plays excellent defense. They're holding their opponents for the season to about 39% shooting. Uh, and they're going to swarm country, and we've got to have some perimeter shooting. The thing that's happened with both those guys, not only is, has their shooting uh, gone south a little bit, uh, it's affected the rest of their play. So we've got to have good play out of Randy and Brooks. I think that's a major key. All right, Coach, best of luck to you in the tournament, and we will see you next week for the Eddie Sutton Show. Thanks for watching this week. See you next week for the same show.